The first book of Corinthians, chapter 8, concerning food sacrificed to idols. Now about food sacrificed to idols? We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something to do not... Uh, those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods in, and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things come and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god and since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge, eating an idol's temple <clears throat> eating in an idol's temple won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols so this weak brother or sister for whom for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge when you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience you sin against Christ therefore if what I eat causes my brother to, or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. Chapter 9. Paul's right. Uh, Paul's right as an apostle. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus or our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? Even though I may not be an apostle to others, surely I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who sit in judgment on me. Don't we have the right to food and drink? Don't we have the right to take the believing wife along with us and do the others, other apostles and the Lord's brothers and Cephas? Or is it only I and Barnabas who lack the right to not work for a living? <clears throat> or sir, who, who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its grapes? Who tends a flock and does not drink the milk? Do I say this merely on human authority? Don't the law say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. It is, uh, is it about oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us, because whoever plows and threshes should be able to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? If others have this right of support from you, shouldn't we have it all the more? But we did not use this right. On the contrary, we put up with anything rather than, uh, rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve in the temple get their food from the temple, and that 
those who serve at the altar share in what is offered in the altar. In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. But I have not used any of these rites, and I am not writing this in the hope that you will do, not, uh, do, do such things for me. For I would rather die than allow anyone to de deprive me of this boast. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Paul's use of his freedom. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law, to those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak. To win the weak, I have become all things to all people so that, they, so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. The need for self-discipline. Do you not know that in our race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes on into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Chapter 10 Warnings from Israel's History for I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. <clears throat> they all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now, these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. <clears throat> Do not be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happen to them <clears throat> as, as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. 
But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. <coughs> Idol feasts and the Lord's Supper. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. It is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks, a participation in the blood of Christ. And is not the bread that we break, a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf. We, who are many, are one body, for, all, for we all share the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the sacrifices participate in the altar? Do I mean then that food sacrificed to an idol is anything or that an idol is anything? <clears throat> no, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. <clears throat> you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? The believer's freedom. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is be beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Eat anything sold in the meat market, meat market without raising, raising questions of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. If an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go, eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it, both for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience. I am, so, uh, I am referring to the other person's conscience, not yours. For why is my freedom being judged by another's conscience? If I take part in the meal with thanks, thankfulness, why am I denounced because of something I thank God for? For whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the Church of God. Even as I try to please anyone in every way, for I, met, uh, I am not seeking my own good, but the, God, uh, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ, uncovering the head in worship. I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding the traditions just as I pass them on to you. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is men, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his, with his head covered, dishonor, covered dishonors his dead head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered it dishonors her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut off. But if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her hair sh head shaved, then she should cover her head. A man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is the glory of a man, for man did not come from woman, but a woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. It is for this reason that a woman ought to have authority over her own head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. 
Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not the very nature of things teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace to him, but that if a woman has long hair, is it her glory? For long hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. Correcting an abuse of the Lord's Supper. In the following directives, I have no praise for you for your meetings. Do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a ch church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, uh, some extent, I believe it. No doubt, there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this manner. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he get, had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why Many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home, so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when, it, when I come, I will give further directions. Amen.